All right, everybody, welcome back to the Stop and Listen podcast. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, we are on season one where we're doing a series on things to consider before purchasing a dump truck, um, mostly for those uh, purchasing their first dump truck. Um, we're on episode three. We're going to be discussing engines in this video. Um, the previous episode was a budget on how to decide on how much to spend on your truck. And the, and the first episode is kind of an intro to this whole series. Now, before I get into this on the engines, I'm stating that I'm no expert in engines, but this is a good good way to help you decide on which one to, to pick. I do recommend you doing your own um, research, but these are things to look at while doing your research. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. So obviously with big truck engines, there are many brands that you can get. You're going to have the Cummins, Navistar, Detroit, Caterpillar on some of the older trucks, um, Mercedes engines, and there's a few more out there. So, But those are kind of the main ones. So when you look at these brands, do your research. Obviously, I have some that I think are better than others, but that's just due to um, experiences I've had with these motors. Um, you know, so the good thing is you do have a wide variety. So depending on what you're looking at for a price point, um, with your truck, you can pick a truck with any of those motors. So I do recommend doing your own research on those. Um, but obviously, um, you know, each, each brand has their pros and cons. I'm not here to say which motor is better, but once you start doing your research, you will realize that there are some that you would want to avoid depending on what year it was manufactured. Now with those brands, all of them have their different types of sizes. So each brand is some may have more options than others, but for the most part, you're going to be looking at three different classes. You're going to be looking at that 300 to 400 horsepower range. You're going to be looking at a motor that's anywhere from 350 to 500 horsepower. And then you're going to get into that 450 to 600 plus horsepower. Now, with those horsepower ratings, don't just say, well, I want the biggest bottom motor or I want the small one because fuel economy. Those don't always correlate to the same thing because sometimes you can have a mid-sized motor, but if you have the right gear ratio and transmission, it's actually pulls pretty good. Um, things to remember, though, when you look at your horsepower ratings is if you want a truck with 400, 450 horsepower, and you say, well, I can get the mid-sized engine because that will cover that for me. Well, keep in mind, just because that engine is rated to do that horsepower, that is toward the top end of what that motor is rated at. So you don't want to over push the motor and run it at 450 if it's rated at its highest output as 450 because you're going to wear that motor out a lot quicker. Now, if you're going to be doing um, a lot of local stuff and you know, you're, not, you're not pulling hills, it's a lot of smaller loads, or if you're running a tandem truck and you're not going to be as heavy, Smaller motor is is not necessarily a bad option if you're not putting a lot of miles on it. It's going to last you two, three hundred thousand miles before you have to start doing little things to it. Um, and the fuel economy will be pretty good. Now that being said, just because you have a big motor does not mean you're going to get poor fuel economy. If you're running the roads or you have a lot of hills and you have a truck with a bigger motor, now of course pulling hills is more than just the size of the motor you're going to you're going to get in and we'll get into that in the future videos where you're going to be talking about gear ratios transmissions things of that nature so keep that in mind big motors don't necessarily mean bad fuel economy remember this with big if you're new to big trucks and motors fuel economy shouldn't really be a concern for you i say this because you're only talking one two gallons different per you know, miles per gallon different so you one may have five miles per gallon one may get seven now if you're running the road and you're which is rare in a dump truck but if you're running long distances in a dump truck that may matter to you but in the end don't base your decision purely off of fuel economy really do your research think about what types of loads you're going to be hauling are you going to be pulling equipment if you've got a pendle hitch put on the back of your dump truck and you're going to be pulling equipment um, some states allow you to maybe weigh 90, 100,000 pounds if you have enough axles, even with a dump truck, if you're pulling equipment. So keep in mind, maybe, you know, if you own a, like a small grading company or something like that, where you're buying, your, you're not just a dump truck driver, you have your own equipment, you're pulling stuff. 
you may want that larger motor to pull that excavator, whether it be up a hill or a bulldozer or whatever it may be, or to help keep speed going down the interstate so you're not blocking the blocking the lanes on everybody and getting yelled at. Um, so keep that in mind. So with so we'll we'll recap a little bit. You're gonna have your Cummins, and I'm reading from a list. By all means, I'm I'm not pretending to memorize all this. You're gonna have your Cummins, your Navistar, Detroit, Cat, Mercedes. Again, there are a couple others out there, but these are your big heavy hitters that you're gonna see the most of. Each one of those brands is gonna have what I call like an entry level motor. It's gonna be more in the medium duty side, but medium duty trucks can get into thirty three thousand or twenty six thousand one pounds or more so it does breach into that commercial class um so you're going to have the entry level motor which is going to give you three to four hundred horsepower you're going to have your mid mid level engine which is going to be that 350 to 500 and then of course your your big boy motors 450 to 600 plus whatever it may be stock um so again keep that in mind um with each brand they have different motors okay now that being said the smaller motors when it comes to maintenance, they're going to use a little bit less oil. I'm not saying you should, but every, again, like I said in the previous video, every penny is going to add up, and you'll see that real quick when it comes to dump trucks and maintenance. So with a smaller motor, obviously, you're probably going to do oil changes more frequently. Some of the bigger motors, you can go a little bit longer with an oil change. But the downside to that is you're going to use more oil because you're looking at a much larger motor. It may be a 11 or 12 liter motor versus a 15 or 16 liter motor so do your research kind of think about that i'm not saying don't buy a motor because it's going to cost you an extra gallon of oil every oil change but it is something to consider also with the brands we'll move on to different fuel types now i recommend and i'm personally a fan of diesel um they just you've got the torque you've got and this is excluding electric because ev just is not really out there for this market yet it is but it's still very fresh to the market so i wouldn't necessarily go for an ev dump truck so we'll start with diesel i'm a big fan of diesel why because you can get diesel pretty much anywhere so if you're out working in a remote area or you're traveling the interstate a little bit you can go anywhere just about anywhere and get diesel um in parts for diesel motors are going to differ versus parts to natural gas or propane driven motors and things of that nature so diesel obviously you're going to get that torque you're going to get that you're going to get that reliability okay um now depending on what state you're in such as california you may want to consider you know that you may want to change it may be a deciding factor to, to not go with diesel because you're worried about maybe your local laws changing or whatever it may be so keep that in mind during your research um, the next is natural gas. I'm seeing a lot more natural gas trucks out there. Um, a lot of them are very large fleets, and they have their own supply where they can, where it's easy for them to fuel up. They've got a, um, a fueling station convenient to them. But if you're out on your own and you want natural gas and you're riding the road, it's, it can be very difficult to find natural gas. Now, yes, you can pre-plan and figure out where these places are at, but it would be unfortunate for you to have to drive 30 miles out of the way every day just to go fill your truck up. So, again, with natural gas, and as far as torque and stuff, I see natural gas more in roll-off trucks more than I do dump trucks. Not saying it doesn't exist for dump trucks, because obviously engines are, you know, applicable to whatever you want to put it in. That's the great thing about dump trucks and large trucks in general is you can kind of make some mass in, make some match engines and transmissions and rear ends and all that fun stuff. Um and then, of course, propane, which propane, you don't see a lot of, mainly because propane normally s stems from a gasoline engine a lot of times. And uh, I don't recommend it. They're just, they don't have the power. I can personally speak on this. I've had a propane truck before, and I felt like I probably could have pushed that truck up the hill faster than I could, you know, hitting the gas pedal. So that's something to consider. But... I try not to recommend anything because everybody's got their own preference and I'm not speaking ill of any any particular fuel or engine or horsepower. But I would recommend out of the three quarters three categories we've spoke about. Um, I pull equipment with our dump truck sometimes, like a, a forty thousand pound excavator behind it. So a lot of times I'm grossing ninety, ninety five thousand pounds. So I typically like a reliable motor, which I'm not gonna give off any brands because I'm not playing favorites here. Um, 
I choose the larger motor just because it, you get the longevity. That motor is going to last you. If you take care of it, it's going to last you 500,000 miles before you ever have to touch it. Maybe longer. Smaller motor, you know, especially pulling heavy, you may be capped out around 200,000 miles. And you're going to start having little issues, maybe a little blow by, maybe a loss of oil pressure, something of that nature. So keep that in mind. And it's going to work hard. It's going to wear your motor out a lot quicker. So reliable engine, large horsepower, and diesel. That's what I prefer. Not because I think I have to have the biggest, baddest truck out there just due to, the, due to the nature of what I do. I'm always hauling 20 tons of material in the truck, which depending on what state you're from, you may not be able to haul that much in the truck, depending on how many axles you have on the truck. So, again, um, I'm speaking for a tri-axle to quad-axle dump truck. Um, fully loaded almost all the time, um, whether I'm hauling loaded and then back hauling something or moving equipment. So that's just something to keep in mind that I keep in mind. Um, and that, and that kind of broached into the next subject, um, that I have wrote down is what are you hauling? Um, you know, if you're a tandem axle truck and you're running the state of North Carolina, which I'm familiar with, uh, it's close to my home state. Um, you're right around, I believe it's 52, 54,000 pounds on the interstate back roads. I think they give you a couple thousand more pounds, but on the interstate. So, you know, 52,000 pounds, let's say your truck weighs, I don't know, a tandem axle truck. Let's say it weighs 25,000 pounds. So you're only hauling 12 and a half, 13 tons of material. That's really not a lot of weight. So you can probably get, get away Depending on what you, what you're hauling, you could probably get away with a mid-size engine. What I mean by mid-size is that 350 to 500 horsepower motor. Um, set that motor to maybe four and a quarter, 425 horsepower, and you've probably got yourself a pretty good little combination. You're not going to kill yourself with fuel, and you're going to have a motor that's going to last. If you take care of it properly, it's going to last a while. It's not a lot to maintain. It doesn't take quite as much oil. So there are some benefits to that. Um the next thing is what type of environment are you in? So I, a lot of times I consider what engine I'm going to get based on the environment. Are there a lot of hills where you're at? Is it a lot of flat land? Um, are you running the interstate? You know, these things play a big factor because if you have a small engine and, you know, if you have a low ratio rear end and it's real torquey, yeah, that helps a little bit. But in the end, horsepower, it's there for a reason, okay? So if you're in an area where it's real mountainous, I recommend having a little bit more power. It's going to help you navigate those hills a little bit better. Um, thanks so you're not having to change gears as much. And, again, I know gear ratio and transmissions come into play with that, but we'll get off on that. But sometimes you still have to have the horsepower there to help those other features on the truck. Interstate, you know, if you're on the interstate and you're running flatlands in your home state, if you're in Florida or somewhere where it's real flat, you know, smaller motor you'd probably be okay even running heavy um again it just depends you have to consider i the only i can give you all the information in this series but in the end i don't know your location and i have i can't do the research for you i don't know what you're going to be hauling so that's why i put a little caveat in all these points in the end it really depends on what research you do to further further what i've done for you already and the next thing is the the last point before I recap everything is location. So with location, and most of the time with a dump truck, that's an easy answer. It's local. But if you are running long distance, whether your company bids work out of town or if you or if you're willing to work out of town for people, you're running long distances. You know that to me is going to fall when it when I'm referring to the engine, not necessarily the size of the engine, but the fuel type of engine. So if you're running local and you know you have a natural gas reserve somewhere that you can get natural gas from, or if you run a propane truck, whatever it may be, um, you know you know where you can get fuel, you should be okay. But you have to be careful if you ever get into long distance stuff, you may not have those options in that state or that area where you're working. So keep that in mind. So to recap, the finish up this little episode um you know you've got your brands do your research and most manufacturers of trucks prefer a certain engine so if you're looking at a a volvo truck more than likely it's going to have a detroit engine in it if you're looking at a sterling truck or a western star more than likely it's going to have a mercedes motor in it. now not necessarily the newer engine the brand new trucks but if you're looking for a used one you're going to see a lot of that um 
be careful with all those brands. I will say this, even though all big diesel motors are fairly expensive to work on, you have to be careful with some of them, like the Mercedes motors. Mercedes has a good reputation of lasting a long time, but when something goes wrong, you are going to pay for it. Trust me. So that's something to keep in mind, your brands. Next thing, pick what kind of horsepower you want. But before you pick your horsepower, you need to consider your location. Are you local? Are you long distance? What's your environment? Are there hills? Is it all interstate? You know, what What are you looking at? Um, what are you hauling? How much weight are you hauling? Now, if you're getting into triaxes and quad axes, you're obviously going to be a lot more heavy. Um, so, you know, you're going to need that power. That's going to be another factor in the engine. And then, of course, with the fuel type of engine, I prefer diesel. Diesel not going, don't worry and say, well, you know, they're trying to get diesels out of here. And that, don't worry, diesel's not going anywhere anytime soon. They have to have it. We still heavily rely on it, so don't let that scare you. One more thing I meant to broach on the engine is you may call it a jake brake, an engine brake, an exhaust brake, whatever you want to call it. I recommend, I'm not saying you have to have straight pipes on your truck and rattle the windows of everybody house while you drive by but i do recommend some type of engine brake exhaust brake whatever they are all very effective i recommend finding one that maybe has multiple stages a lot of them are on and off but um if you can find one with at least two preferably three stages that way if you're loaded going down the hill you can hit stage three and it's going to keep you from having to ride your brake pedal and using up your brakes and your brakes will last a lot longer you might get 100,000 more miles out of your brakes if you properly use an engine brake. Um, you know, if, you, if you're if you going down a hill, you're not loaded and you're empty and you're putting on stage one, you're still going to, if you put it on stage three, it'll almost stop you in the road if you're empty. But if you put it on stage one, it'll kind of help. You can kind of maintain your speed down the interstate. You don't have to give it gas. You don't have to hit your brake. It's just kind of coasting for you down the hill without, you know, building up excessive speed or excessive heat on your brakes so again guys i hope that helps you this was episode three we're talking about engines remember we want our brand we want to pick what kind of horsepower and when you're in what type of fuel type and when you're making those decisions remember your location are you local long distance what are you hauling in your environment hills flat land whatever it may be all right guys thanks again for watching this is the stop and listen podcast i'm your host alex and we will catch you on the next one